The Inquisition that took place largely in medieval times is a relatively popular topic in world history, mostly because a large portion of the Western world is Christian. It left a mark in the minds of many, as the Catholic Church seemed to commit in full to combating heresy. The Inquisition in some ways put the Church's power on full display as it concerns world history. So I thought it would be interesting to speak about what was going on in Africa during this time. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. Even though inquisitions happen during different periods, the period we're going to be focusing on today is what some may refer to as the Medieval Inquisition, which took place in 1184 through the 1230s. And so, we'll be discussing what was going on in Africa during this time. Now, a lot was going on in Africa in general, and so I can't mention all of them in this video. So in the comments below, feel free to name some of the events in Africa that you are aware of during this time frame. In about the year 1200, the East African city-state of Kilwa was really coming into its own. Kilwa became the preeminent coastal trading city because it became the main transshipment point for gold from Great Zimbabwe. As people in Kilwa became more prosperous, they built large houses of coral rag and lime mortar, produced cloth to trade with their neighbors, minted their own copper coins, and imported increasing quantities of Persian and Chinese pottery, rich cloths, and expensive glass beads. Archaeological excavations have unearthed evidence that copper coins were being minted in Kilwa by this time. Upon his visit to Kilwa a century later, Ibn Battuta had this to say, We traveled by sea to the city of Kulwa. Most of its people are Zanuj, extremely black. The city of Kulwa is amongst the most beautiful of cities and most elegantly built. Next, we have what I would consider one of the best events in North African history during this time. When the first inquisition was taking place in France in 1184, the greatest Moorish leader, Yusuf Yaqub al-Manzur came to the throne of the Almohad Empire. As he ascended the Moorish throne, he had to deal with a lot of civil unrest and just individuals who wanted to test his strength. He retook the lands that were taken by the Banu Ghaniya and quelled rebellions by various Amazigh clans. By this time, southern Spain was in the control of the Almohads and the Spanish, upon hearing that a new Moorish leader had taken the throne, believed that they had an opportunity to relinquish themselves of Moorish rule. Jacob turned his attention to Spain in 1194. He defeated the Spanish at every battle, the Battle of Alarcos being his most famous victory in 1195. It was after this battle that Jacob was known to the Almohads as al Manzor, which means one made victorious by God. Jacob continued his way through the southern parts of Spain, conquering many cities, and today, Yaqub is remembered for his stellar military leadership, vast accomplishments, and for bringing absolute glory to the African continent. During the latter end of the medieval inquisition, the most famous battle in West Africa was taking place. The formation of the Mali Empire began in 1235 when a young Mandinka prince named Sanjata Keita defeated the infamous Sumanguru Kante. As Sumanguru was ravaging lands, eventually capturing the old capital of the Wagadu Empire, known as Kumbisela, Sanjata Keita was gaining support from local Mandinka clans and the ruler of Mima. In 1235, Sanjata and Sumanguru finally met on the plains of Karina. According to oral tradition, even though Sanjata had some early success in a previous encounter, the final battle of Karina was hard fought and for a moment, it looked as if Sumanguru was going to win until Sanjata found Sumanguru personally on the battlefield and gave him the final blow, wounding him with his arrow. This was a pretty unprecedented moment in African history because Sanjata's victory was the beginning of one of the greatest empires in African history. The Mali Empire went on to greatly influence much of the cultural landscape in that region. 
The next moment in African history during the time of the Inquisition was the reign of King Lalabella of Ethiopia. Lalabella came to the throne just three years before the first Inquisition in 1181, and his reign lasted well into the key moments throughout the medieval Inquisition period. Lalabella was the most famous king of the Zagwe dynasty, which ruled in northern Ethiopia. His reign was marked by several accomplishments, including the construction of a series of churches carved out of volcanic rock. Lalabella, like many other famous rulers, is surrounded by legends of all kinds. One such legend tells how Lalabella came to have his name. The story goes as follows. A cloud of bees swarmed around the newly born Lalabella. Seeing the bees, the infant cried out, Lalabella, which means the bees know he will rule. Another legend tells of Lalabella as a youth, at a time when Lalabella's brother was king. Knowing of the legend surrounding Lalabella's name, the king was afraid that the bee prophecy would come true. So the king poisoned the young prince, sending young Lalabella into a coma that lasted three days. During that time, it's claimed that Lalabella was in heaven, where God told the youngster that he would indeed survive to become king. God also commanded Lalabella to construct a series of unique stone churches. Lalabella survived and eventually came to power. Lalabella immediately started to work on the churches and they were carved out quickly and precisely. Under Lalabella's direction, 11 churches were carved out of pinkish rock at the Zagwe capital. Because Jerusalem had fallen under Muslim rule, Lalabella made every effort to recreate the Christian Holy Land of Jerusalem hoping that his new city of churches would become a major place of pilgrimage since journeys to Jerusalem had become difficult. As a part of this, Lalabella gave Christian-inspired names to places in the city. A local hill, for example, was called Calvary, and a stream was named Jordan. For our final event during the Inquisition, the central African ruler of the Kanem Empire named Dunama de Belami was on the throne. Dunama came to the throne in 1210 and ruled until 1248. He was a devout Muslim and commanded a powerful army consisting of 40,000 men on horseback. During his reign, he expanded the size and power of the Kanem Empire. Dunama developed excellent relationships with the sultans of northern Africa and established an embassy for the Kanem Empire in Tunisia and a hostel and school in Cairo, Egypt for Muslims from the Kanem Empire taking their pilgrimage to Mecca in Arabia. Upon forming diplomatic ties with Tunisia, Dunama sent the king of Tunisia many gifts including a giraffe, which created quite a stir in Tunisia. The Kanem Empire, under the leadership of Dunama, soon waged war on the peoples of Fazan in southern Libya, eventually commanding full control over the trade routes over the area. The Hausa people, located in northern Nigeria, battled with the Kanem Empire only to be subdued. Shortly after, the Kanem Empire was also waging war against another African ethnic group in the region, known as the Bulala. This is where the legacy of Dunama begins to take a turn, because he set the stage for the civil unrest that was later to come in Kanem's history, breaking the entire empire apart. Being a devout Muslim, Dunama destroyed a very important religious relic for the Africans in the region called the Moon Relic. According to one source, the Moon Relic was perhaps a statue of a moon that made its way into the Kanem Empire since ancient times, and the local traditionalists held it in high esteem. Even converted Muslims still revered the Moon Relic, and so its destruction by Dunama caused much division within the empire leading to its eventual demise. While I'm all out guys, I'm hoping you learned a little about what was going on in Africa during the Inquisition. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.